What is all this stuff here you got, JJ? What is this weird looking can thing with a hole on it? So this is the overflow can. And uh, what we use this for is to capture displaced fluid. So the can is filled with soapy water um, to this spout level here. And so if we put anything or we submerge anything down in the fluid, it's gonna displace some out into this beaker here. And we're gonna catch it in that beaker. So if we put this whole cylinder in, then the volume of the water that goes into this beaker would equal the volume of the cylinder. That's correct, yeah. Now, what if we wanted to know the mass of that water? Uh, so what we're gonna do in this experiment is we're going to measure a few things. And one of them is the mass of the displaced water. And so I've got a, a balance here um, that we're gonna first put the, the beaker on, and I'm gonna actually do that right now uh, so we can use that beaker. So you could either record the mass of the beaker, which is about 50 grams, or... Right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the beaker on here and then we're gonna tear this or zero it uh, and then take it off. And the, the although the scale reads a negative value right now, if we put fluid in the beaker and then put it back on, it's gonna tell us, it subtracts out automatically the mass of this beaker. So we have to do less math that way. Yes, that's right. Okay, so that's the, why you wanna do it. That's right, so the, the, the balance is gonna tell us the mass of the fluid that gets displaced. Now, why are we hanging the cylinder from a smart cart? Uh, what we're gonna do in this experiment is we're gonna submerge this metal cylinder, <clears throat> right? And we're going to measure the tension in the string here that uh, from the weight of the cylinder. Uh, and we're suspecting that that tension is gonna change as we submerge it because of a buoyant force. And we're trying to see how that change happens depending on how much of the cylinder is submerged and how much water gets displaced. And so we're going to measure the force of tension here while also comparing uh, the weight or the mass of the water that gets displaced. And then we're gonna use that to calculate the weight of the water. So the upward force of tension you're saying is gonna go down as we submerge it. And the amount it goes down is the buoyant force. That's right. So right now uh, the force sensor is measuring the tension and uh, it, that tension is due to the weight of this brass cylinder. Okay. Um, and so as we submerge it, the measurement that the sensor is making, the tension is gonna change. Well, we suspect it'll change. Uh, and that change will be that force. From so, the so I need to record what the tension is. Right now it's 2.01. Uh, we should make sure it's zero when right. that's not on it. So in this experiment, the first thing, one of the first things we wanna do is make sure we okay. zero our force sensor while well, nothing's there. It's zero. Okay, so we're pretty good there. And so, again, I'll let go. And th that tension that it's measuring is the weight of that brass cylinder. So I'll enter that. Yeah, and so that that value on the right side of your screen, uh, that's a live reading from the sensor and that tells okay. you the tension in the string. Now it says here in the data table, we're, we're gonna re uh, submerge it one quarter its length. Yes, so in the experiment, we're going to uh, collect one, two, three, four, five data points one when it's not submerged at all. We have that. Yeah, one when it's a quarter, one when it's half submerged, when the half of the length of it is submerged, three quarters and then completely submerged. So we'll need to know that total length. And so I'll enter that in the data table uh, as the depth when the whole thing is submerged. And so each one of these cylinders is 6.5 centimeters. So I'll enter that because you will need to know that. Yeah, and so what I've done here and what the experiment has you do is you take your cylinders and these two cylinders are identical in terms of their geometry. Uh, and then you measure and mark the cylinder in quarter sections. So there's three marks on the cylinder indicating one quarter, half, three quarter, and then obviously if it's fully I submerged. I can see this one has the same thing. So that will help with the data collection. Right. And so we're gonna go down in stages first with none of it submerged, a quarter, half, three quarters, and then fully. Now it looks like this might be tilted a little. Is that gonna cause a problem? Yeah, so we wanna make sure that this cylinder 
hanging from the center is hanging straight up and down because the volume that we're going to submerge is part of this experiment. It'll be easier to calculate. Right. And so again, if, less math. Yes. Right. So if we submerge a cylinder straight up and down, we know that we can easily figure out what that volume is. Okay. Let's do it. <clears throat> okay. So we've zeroed the, the, the balance. The water level is at the right height. So when we submerge this, fluid will displace and go into that beaker. I think we're ready. Yep. Okay, so yeah, no no mass has been displaced now. So I'm gonna loosen this and then lower it down until a quarter of the cylinder is submerged. Yeah, water's coming out. All right, and I'll just lock that in. Yeah, and this dripping uh, can take a while. So um, we might speed things up a little bit in this video just to help because we're gonna do this three more times. Okay. Okay, so the, the dripping has slowed down quite a bit and um, you know, the, the drips just get further and further apart and once they get far enough apart, and what did you say, once every 15 seconds yeah. or so, then that's probably good enough. There's one more coming out. I'd say if you can measure the mass of the water before the next drip comes out, then yeah. it's probably good. Okay, so I'm gonna take this, put it on our balance and it reads, 5.26 grams. Okay. Enter that. And then the tension definitely went down. It's fluctuating between 1.96 and 7. And, or at least it was. Okay. And now we're ready for submerging it halfway. Right. So I'm going to loosen that. And there's halfway. And, and the now, dripping commences again. Okay, so again, the dripping has slowed quite a bit. We'll maybe wait for one more drop and then make our mass measurement real quick and record our tension value. And yes. sometimes you can speed it up by tapping it a little bit, but you don't want to upset it yeah. if you want accurate data. Right. That's good. Okay. So I'm going to put this on the balance, 11.24 grams. Okay. That makes sense. It's not, it's a little more than double the other one. And then we have a 1.9 tension. Yep. And okay. we're ready for three quarters. All right, three quarters. And the dripping goes again. Okay, so we'll let this drip go in and then maybe one more and then we'll go ahead and measure the mass. There we go, that'll get that out there. All right, once, as soon as it drips, we'll go ahead and take it. And... Boop. This mass is 16.76. Okay, I've got that entered. And the tension is 1.84. All right. And now we're ready for three quarters. I mean, all the way. Full, fully submerged. Three, three quarters. All right. Okay, dripping is slowed again, one about every 15, maybe actually more than 15 seconds. We'll wait for this last drop to go in and then we'll take this last data point for the cylinder. And drip. The mass is 23.95. Okay, and the tension 1.77. And so the remaining things in this data table uh, include figuring out the volume that's submerged. So now the entire thing is submerged and you know its length and it's a cylinder. 
but you also would need to know the radius. Correct. And so we're gonna tell you the radius here. There's not a place in the data table. The radius of the cylinder is 1.17 centimeters. So you need to know that to be able to figure out the volume. Right, and then once you know the volume of the whole cylinder, it's just some, some easy math to figure out what the volume is when you had a quarter of it, a half of it, and three quarters right. of it submerged. Uh, and then we're, we're gonna repeat this experiment using the aluminum cylinder, and we're gonna follow the exact same procedure. So we're just gonna provide the data that we collected for that uh, separately. It'll be in with the um, brass cylinder data when you go into the file. So aluminum cylinder, what would be different about that? It's still metal. Why would we do that? That's correct. The uh, the densities of the two metals are different. Oh. Right? So I wonder what would that would that make mean the uh, tension would go down more or less? Well, that's what we find out in the experiment. So okay. observe your data and uh, answer the analysis questions accordingly.